this is another framework that you can refer when you are starting off with building MVP or trying to incorporate more of the MVP approach in your day to day life that you identify a problem uh, and you figure out a at least from a software product perspective, a no code or a very, very low code way to. Uh, so, for example, if you want to do a survey, you can either go to qualtrics.com, sign up, create a survey form, all of that, integrate them with your website, in, embed them in your email marketing for a template, and then shoot it off to everyone. Or you can just cre simply create a Google form and circulate the link to all your customers over an email or whatever, WhatsApp group, whatever. So, figure out a way to do the same thing but without really investing a lot of money without investing a lot of resources time and uh, try to get early feedback that's about it and then you keep iterating keep building on it so identify the problem by listening to the voice of customer determine assumptions with problem solution set build testable hypothesis define and set minimum criteria for success decide on the types of MB mvp techniques you want to use plan and execute the MVP, iterate. So understand who your customer is, who would be more willing to buy this product. Also understand what are the assumptions you're making. So, uh, so, so when you are doing an MVP, let's say uh, you want to build a Zappos.com, Zappos right? Before you come to a workable hypothesis, you are coming to an assumption that let's say there are these uh, college kids, right? When people who are between 20 to 25, 28, 30, who do not, who are working their uh, back off and are not uh, probably don't really see much merit in, you know, spending time, taking a cab, going to a mall, going inside a store, looking for a shoe, buying it, coming back. So that's like two, three hours, four hours worth of effort, right? Uh, they probably much would much rather, I mean, they just need to go to college and office. That's what you're doing in your early twenties. So they would probably not be that bothered with what uh, fashion designer has created the shoe or, or all of that, as long as they're comfortable and they're cheap, right? So that's your assumption. It's not measurable. It's not actionable. It's, it has some uh, vague, uh, sense of target audience but not completely and there's i mean there's no head or tails to it it's just an assumption that you have in your mind right then you create it into a an actionable hypothesis by setting up a website uh, like one just a single page and then going about your job right you reach out to the right target audience you you do your research and think think things through and figure out that okay if I go to Harvard's and Boston's and Stanford's or let's say IIT Bombay and IIT Madras and Nasimonji in Bombay, um, I would probably, or RV College of Engineering, I will probably find the kind of crowd who would be interested in these kind of shoes and would also be technologically save, savvy enough to go to Zappo, my Zappos.com website and check them out and figure out a way to buy it buy the shoes so so your assumption is like the base layer of your mvp right where there's not much head or, to, or tails to it but it's just a a thought you have uh, like a seed that you have the hypothesis is sort of the sprout that you know like you ensure there are it, things are sprouting and then taking some form of direction and shape etc and uh, the other thing that I wanted to show you was when you are making these assumptions before you reach a hypothesis. Yeah, you should probably use this business model canvas. This is available on the web as well for you to download. So be, uh, you can or you can just do it on a piece of paper. So uh, when you're thinking about an assumption, uh, one way to ensure that you probably may have 10 different assumptions, but which one do you assign most importance to or which one merits more importance, you can probably use this template where you can write down that, for example, to build a Zappos.com key part. What are the key partners you would need that you need a neighborhood store and you need logistics and you need a GST ID, GST number, for example. What are the key activities you would be doing? You'd be going to the uh, stores, clicking pictures if, if you're allowed to. 
and then refining those uh, editing those pictures putting them on the website and uh, a value proposition will be so and so your re relationship will be more personalized or generic whatever what will be the tonality of it uh, which kind of segment are you going to target when you're thinking are they even reachable when you so when you start writing you you start thinking more and more that are these people who i'm thinking of reaching are they even reachable how will i reach them right what would what would be the key ingredients um what would be the channels through which i'll reach out to my this segment that i have in mind what would my cost structure look like what would my revenue structure look like so when you when you do all of this then you uh, i mean you break them down into these elements then you start to get a more realistic sense of whether your assumption assumption or assumptions are uh, on the right track or worth it so maybe you may end up realizing you're trying to set up a side hustle right you're not doing a startup you're just so you just want to moonlight and do something on the side uh, you go through this entire activity and realize boss this is going to take too much of my time that's uh, i don't have that much time so maybe we should try something that is less time sensitive and also meets my cost structure requirements and revenue requirements